as you can probably tell, things have escalated slightly. So, where am I at? Well, hopefully, I can now get the, compre the compressor, the condenser out. But I'm not going to count my chickens. Oh yes, there we go. Really? That was an ordeal. But the ordeal isn't over yet. Because as you can see in here is the remains of the condenser and the uh, bottom pipe is stuck in it. And if I break that pipe, it goes off down there and I haven't looked, but I don't think I need to. I think I can use the um, rule of sod's law to know that that pipe is probably one that goes all the way off down there and then around there and into the cockpit. It's probably that one. No joke, it probably is that one down there. So. I have to try and get that out of there without wrecking anything. There's the condenser. And there's me like thinking I wasn't potentially going to buy one. See what it was like first. <laughs> and there's the radiator, which is properly gummed up. That is a mess. Can you see through it? You can see a bit through it. But if we look at this pipe here, so these, this is the top and bottom hose, are actually both top hoses, it doesn't have one on the bottom. But if I just squeeze this, I can just break it. You shouldn't be able to do that. But the condenser is original. I think, because I'm pretty sure I've seen. Yeah, look, 12th of April, 2007. So it's done well. Well, I say it's done well. I don't know if it has done well, it wasn't working. So the radiator might be original as well. It probably is. Oh dear, there's my bodge. It held on, but it wasn't holding on. So now the problem is, Got to try and get the remains of that out. I think I'm going to have to cut the fan cowl in. Because if I just cut a tiny little slit in it down there, I'll be able to pull it out. I don't think it'll... I really don't think it'll make much difference to its strength. It's quite substantial. Whoop. I've got my glasses. Oh, it's fiberglass. It's not plastic. I know this isn't right, but time is not my friend at the moment. That's not the neatest thing I've ever done. But does it work? Yes, it does. Yeah. Oh dear. And then what I'm hoping is I can need the rubber mount. I can whittle away the condenser and get this switch out because the aluminium is just all corroded together. So if I can get that switch out there. Oh, a bit of bird. Just try I suppose. I appreciate this is not optimal. Oh, I need to get that sensor out. Because that's something I haven't ordered. Ooh, aircon oil coming out. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, I thought that had... Ow, that's still hot. I thought that had gone through.
I can see the hole. What I'll have to do now is kind of hold this up like that and then go zzz, zzz. Yeah, I'll have to cut down there and down there, but not far enough to hit this. And then probably switch to a flap disc and then just whittle away until it releases. Ugh. I mean, the worst case scenario is I butcher the pipe and I can't get the aircon working, which would be annoying after shelling out 95 quid on a condenser. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not the end of the world. It'd be nice. Just to very carefully try and go across there, I think. That's going to go badly wrong. I've used mole grips now so I don't lose fingers. Ow. Oh, this is ridiculous. Be a miracle if this aircon even works. All the crap that's going in it. So the studs now are not doing anything. Ow. I'm guessing that's still. Yeah. Bloody raining again. <sighs> Please just come off. Yeah, I have nicked the pipe a little bit. Hopefully it's all right, it's the best I could do. And you can see all the crud, that's all bits of the old condenser. Also, I was hoping that I'd get a clear shot at doing all these hoses and that it wouldn't be tight, but there's a big intercooler in the way. Something that my instructions from Citroen negated to tell me, possibly because they're for a petrol. Who knows? So I'm just going to try and blast all that out and then have a think about how, how much further I go tonight. Time for a situation report. There's bits missing. I've got a sprinkler system going at the moment. This isn't for flowers or anything like that. It's because when I put the key in earlier on to try and turn the steering so I could get into the wheel arch, uh, I hadn't put the fuel pipes back on and the fuel pump primed. And you think, oh, that's not good. Diesel went everywhere. It's gone in the cooling system, it's gone down the back of the engine, it's gone everywhere. Although it has washed a lot of oil off. That's what this is washing away, because it has a big black puddle there. Um, but the beauty of that is that I took the key out and it kept going, and I locked the doors and it kept going. That's fantastic. Um, right, so. 
behind this fan pack here, which is going to be a nightmare to take out because it's got lots of rusty fixings along the bottom, I can work around it because you can take the fans out of the housing and go through it, that's fine, but there's an intercooler behind it. And I mentioned this earlier on and people will be going, why don't you just take the intercooler out? Be a good idea to clean it out as well. Yes, it would, excellent. But this hose I have removed. That one, can't get it off, can't get near it. Um, I don't even know how I can get in there really. That's something I needed to be on the ramp for. Just can't get to it. It's, uh, it's a nightmare, so we're not sure on that one. Um, but the pipes are out, the aircon pipes, which means some new seals and uh, a bit of cleaning up of the connections and things. I need to seal these up as well. Can't be letting these um, sit in sort of open atmosphere too long as moisture could get in. Not that there's a load of metal filings and spray in there already, but there you go. Um, so I've got to wait for this to come. And there is a strong part of me that is considering cutting and shutting the pipe here so I don't have to go burying around on the back of the engine, I'll see. So I've got to wait for one of these. I've got to wait for one of them. I've got all those other ones to put on, which are around the front there. I've got the one that goes to the header tank. <sighs> yeah. If I wasn't doing all those other hoses, I would have put the condenser and the radiator in, but... Do you know, when I came down here this morning, I thought, I'm gonna do all that in one go. I'm just gonna do thermostat housing, drop the coolant, change that, radiator, condenser, and then just bosh it all back together and be home in time for BTCC qualifying. Dan Robottom has pole. Um, that's not a spoiler alert, because this won't go out before the race, so I don't even know who wins it. Race is tomorrow. We'll know by the time you see this who won it. Well, won three of them, I should say. Because, you know, the pole was qualifying for the first race. But, um, yeah, anyway. So, yeah, basically I'm just going to have to wait now for these bits to arrive. Um, and, yeah, just... <sighs> <laughs> Why do I cut these things so close? <sighs> I'm beaten, honestly. I've been at this all day. This is a pig. Although, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, you're zoomed out, but to get the radiator pack forward, the cowling that directs air into the radiator, this rubber thing here, hinges and it has a latch. So when you want to move this forward, you just unlatch it and turn it 90 degrees, bring it forward, put it back, click it back into place. It's brilliant. Of course, I ripped that one off before I realised. Um, yeah. No, that's that's basically it, I think. Now I need to tidy all this up. I think my rainbows have stopped now. That's good. I'm going home.